Would you like to tell us a little bit about the rebirthing technique you developed? Um, yes, uh, in relation to what we're talking about, uh, the breath is the bridge between the visible and the invisible. And the breath is the power of the mind, it's the subjective or physiological power of the spirit. And uh, so breathing uh, also is a purification method, it's a very powerful purification. And um, so the when as soon as we get beyond the mind uh, and we start thinking about the most value, the next most valuable thing in life, it's breathing. And so people lose their power to participate in the physical universe when they stop breathing. Um, so learning to breathe better increases our power, but increasing our power uh, makes it more necessary to to be uh, aware of what we're thinking because the power of the breath materializes the results of our thinking and so it's very important to uh, purify the mind when we add more power to our being and so reversing itself uh, developed in my experience over a period of 12 years of spiritual accidents. And most of those accidents took place in my bathtub. And you could say that it was, the warm water was a stimuli for spontaneous regression. And it has a tendency to to relaxing in the tub has a tendency to enable us to perceive the most uh, significant experiences that we've had in our life and how they molded our character. And so when we do relax and allow uh, spontaneous regression to occur, it is a very powerful form of mental, emotional, and spiritual liberation. It enables us to <coughs> to discover the most uh, significant events in our life and to go beyond them and to understand uh, the meaning of those events and what to do with that meaning. And so, using the medium of warm water as a relaxation technique is how I unconsciously discovered, um, well, I discovered my own divine nature in a very practical and powerful way. And so in 1973, I did a talk about uh, my own birth memories and a, a people in my lecture uh, were people who were working on themselves and they were quite brave and they said they wanted to have birth memories and so it's not every person they come across was interested in having birth memories and so I, I gave them a technique which is to get into the bathtub and stay there until you feel like it's time to get out and then stay there another hour. Because the feeling that it's time to get out is what I came to realize a urgency barrier. It's an urgy barrier in the mind that prevents us from going into our feelings and going to the source of our feelings. And so when people stay there another hour, they automatically uh, regress into into primal experiences. And so, uh, 20 or so people tried that. And they came back to another seminar they did a month later. 
and they said they had such powerful experiences, they wished that I had been there with them so that they would have somebody to talk to because there wasn't anybody in their family that they felt safe enough to talk to about the things that were happening and even if they did feel safe enough, they didn't think their family would understand and have a clue about what they were talking about. And so that's really how the profession of rebirth got created. And sitting with a person while they're taking a bath, <laughs> which is kind of an unusual profession. And so after doing that uh, several times, we got the idea of using a big California hot tub. This is 1974. And hot tubs were uh, was one of the uh, most aggressive businesses at that time. And using a snorkel and nose clips and having two people in the hot tub, one person to hold or to support the body so the person didn't bob up and down and lose contact with the experience they were having. So they would feel totally safe. And because safety is a catalyst for regression. And then the other person would watch the snorkel so they didn't get water in the snorkel. So um, people had the most powerful experiences of their life. And at the end of every experience, people would say, I have experienced the peace that passes all understanding. I feel more relaxed than I've ever felt in my life, and I feel better than I can ever remember to feel. And so uh, they would do this rebirthing experience, and then they would go tell their friends, and their friends would come over, and time we charge $60 for a session, and they would, it was a continuous stream of people coming to my house in San Francisco, and they would plunk down their $60, go down into the basement, take off all their clothes, because taking off their clothes was optional, but everybody came into this world nude, and they wanted to do their rebirth nude, and they would take off all their clothes with, and get into the hot tub with total strangers most cases, and have the most meaningful experience of their entire life. <laughs> and then they would put on their clothes and go and tell all their runs. So it never ended. And so, and, and the interest spread, started spreading all over the world, and I, wherever I went, I had to find a hot tub, whether it was Southern California, or Alaska, or New York City, wherever I was, I had to find a hot tub or a big enough bathtub so that people could relax and go into this experience and use the snorkel. Well, after uh, doing several hundred people with that hot tub rebirthing experience, and the name rebirthing has stuck, even though I tried to change the name to conscious breathing. It didn't work because we learn to breathe at birth. And there's so much other uh, significant emotional memories and patterns that are uh, start with our birth experience that it just has maintained. And many people have had tried to change the name and rebirthing just persists to be the most popular word in every language, almost. And so, then I asked the question, well, what I noticed when I gave several hundred sessions is that the key to the experience was breathing. And during the full power of the experience, people would be breathing in a certain way, which we called connected rhythm. Uh, continuous connected breathing rhythm in which the inhales merge with the exhale. And so after the first year I started asking the question, is it possible to facilitate the same kind of experience without the water just by guiding a person into the breathing rhythm that I saw spontaneously occurring in the middle of their rebirthing experience? And it always happened. And so then I start, decided to experiment, and I started to guide people into that breathing rhythm without the water, and discovered that they had the same kind of powerful experience. And so that was a 
significant innovation in the history of rebirthing because it meant that people didn't have to take off their clothes in the presence of strangers. And, and uh, that was a significant barrier for middle class housewives who, whose uh, husbands might object to them uh, doing that. And uh, so then it spread e even faster. And, and it's still spreading faster than I can, can keep up with. It spread to over 10 million people all over the world. And every hour on the hour somewhere on the planet, somebody is getting liberated by a rebirthing experience. And so the rebirthing experience is one to two hours, normally one to two hours. And statistically, it's amazing how many sessions that I have facilitated that were exactly an hour and a half. People closed their eyes. Uh, they started doing the connected breathing rhythm. The divine energy took over, empowered the breathing. And an hour and a half later, they opened their eyes. They went through all kinds of physiological transformations. They had a direct experience of God and many experiences. It was total, totally amazing spiritual experience. People have all kinds of healings, physical healings. And there's all kinds of emotional transformations which transform people's relationships. So that's a uh, quick uh, sketch of how uh, reverse. Would I be right in this, I'm assuming then that the sense deprivation tanks may have been an extension that evolved from your, the beginnings of your work? No, that started before. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it became popular around the same time. It, but would we be understanding if they had a if they had a technique would that sense deprivation tanks help them in any way well it's pretty or am I, are they any people have spontaneous birth memories in the deprivation tank but and rebirthers use the the, the, the deprivation tanks uh, because uh, for obvious reasons uh, yeah. but um, but it doesn't really uh, give a complete rebirthing experience without the breathing rhythm. Mm -hmm. And so when I experienced, experimented with the giving enough breathing sessions, then I realized that the water is too powerful a psychoanalytical stimulus and that people should actually uh, have at least 10 breathing sessions before they uh, implement warm water sessions. The sensory deprivation tank is not warm water, it's a lower temperature. And rebirthing, we use a higher temperature, mm -hmm. uh, one or two degrees over body temperature is the best uh, temperature for rebirthing. If it's too hot, it becomes uh, suppressive. And if it's too cold, people can't relax completely. And my experience in, sep in, uh, in a separate a deprivation tank is right at body temperature. And it's not really warm enough to induce uh, deep regression experiences. Uh, but it does uh, give people a spontaneous uh, experience of transcendental state. It's almost impossible get into a, a sensory dep deprivation tank without uh, experience transcendental state. And in the course of doing that, you might have to face some things in your mind that you didn't want to face, and so people can have cathartic experiences as well as spiritual experiences uh, doing this thing. Could you briefly explain quickly the breathing techniques for us? Uh, merging the inhale with the exhale is the uh, most natural form of prana yoga. It is the prana yoga of newborn babies. It's the way we breathe when we are born. But every negative thought and experience that we have inhibits the breathing. And as a result, death occurs when we have accumulated in our psychophysical organism enough uh, negative experiences that we become so miserable we don't want to be in the body anymore. 